morning you guys it's karen and excuse the strange um setup i'm in my living room the light's better from these patio doors so i'm making use of it while i can um i wanted to come and do a video on the medichex um self-testing system which i have used now twice three times maybe i'm, I'm about to get another test as well um i've said before testing your own health or testing my own health has certainly been something that I've been interested in for more than 20 years, probably 25 years. And I can remember one of the very first tests I ever did was I took some of my hair and sent it off for sampling to find out if I was deficient in certain vitamins and whatnot. So I've always had an interest in it. I think it's really useful information. Um, and I think I just think the NHS is so overloaded at the moment that the GPs can miss a lot of things. And I can't remember if I did my areas that the NHS have let me down and areas I think they're amazing kind of video. Um, but there have been a lot of things that have been missed for me. But I do think the NHS is brilliant, don't get me wrong, but they're overloaded. So I think it's a great way of kind of taking charge of your own health. And yes, it does cost money. But like I said, I've been doing it for years. It was that important to me. You know, it was what I spent my money on. So it, it just depends. If you've got something that's really worrying you, there are all sorts of tests on there that can just, it can either put your mind at rest or it can alert the doctor. You know, it's something you can take to the GP and go, look, this is the results. What do you think? Um, and I've been more interested in it since having all these head problems. And first test I did with Medichex was urine microscopy. So you guys know that I've had a lot of bladder issues and that was interesting information. Um, but the test I'm talking about today, the test that I'm doing today is a heart health check. Um, you can have just your cholesterol, you can have um, a heart health check plus, which is much more than the one I'm doing today. Mine is a heart health check. So it's cholesterol, which breaks it down for you into HDL, LDL, triglycerides, your ratio. And this one also includes a CRPHS test, which I'll tell you about as I put it on the screen and explain what's going on. Um, and so the reason I'm doing this test is because I've been on the keto diet now for a couple of months, um, on and off, but I've been, you know, eating a lot of cream, a lot of butter. I don't eat a lot of like sausages and bacon or processed meat or anything like that, but I do eat a lot of butter and cream and eat a lot of cheese. So I wanted to see, well, how has it affected my cholesterol? Um, and more importantly, how has it affected my triglycerides? Because I know that when you're on keto, your cholesterol will go up. But as long as your triglycerides are going down, hopefully, and your ratio, which I can't, I won't fully explain the ratio, but ratio is the important thing. There's a little mathematic thing you do to see what your ratio is. As long as those figures are okay, I wouldn't be too worried. And I've got family that have had heart disease my dad's had two heart attacks my dad's brother died of a heart attack so there's, there's a lot of heart disease there's a lot of diabetes in my family there's a lot of high blood pressure there's a lot of high cholesterol so there's good reasons for me to keep an eye on these things and i already have an extra heartbeat um with elis dan loss i'm kind of kept an eye on because of that and what it does to your heart and this recent um kind of odd ecg and i'm i'm waiting to hear the results of the more recent heart monitor so there's a lot of good reasons for me to do this test so the first thing i'm going to do is just show you me taking the blood um going through exactly what you do with the medichex test kit how it arrives um and then i will talk you through the results so this is the medichex box that comes up through the letterbox um it fits through the letterbox which is fantastic so um inside it says step one get ready step two collect a sample step three pack and post you do need to post your sample on the day you take it so you know, don't immediately take it um, unless you can post it that day. And this is all the instructions here. I'm just going to get everything out and ready to go. I have used one of theirs before for um, urology. So I had a check to see how many white cells I had in my urine. You can see everything laid out here. I've just bought some kitchen roll across as well. Um, it does say that it's best to stand up. So I'm going to stand up when I'm taking the blood and hopefully I'll be able to film it. Um, so to prepare, it says, lay everything out you need, place the sample tubes in the holding slots in the test box. Oh, I didn't know that it had that. That's really useful. So this goes in there. Oh, I see. And we'll just, let's undo it. So you can just put your blood in there like that. I see, I see, that's good. 
and then just put that on there for a minute. Making sure you don't mix up the coloured cap. So I've only got one. This is if you've got more than one test. Select your finger. Wash your hands in warm water. The warm water helps the blood flow. Um, select your finger and use the alcohol wipe to clean it. So I'm assuming that's the pre-injection swabs because it's 70% alcohol versus the saline wipe. Um, and then twist off the end of the lancet. Press the lancet firmly down on your finger. Wipe away the first drop of blood and then massage your finger. Okay, you guys, I've switched the angle a little bit. I'm walking on the spot because it helps. <laughs> it helps with blood flow. So I have decided that I'm going to use my middle finger on my left hand. I've just washed my hands in uh, water, in warm water. I'm going to put this over here and take the lid off. The idea is to fill this up. I'm pretty sure I'll make a mess, but we will see. So I've got one ready. Ouch. So you have to wipe away the first bit. Oh, do you know what I didn't do? I didn't use the stereo swab. So let's wipe that. So you're supposed to wipe that first bit of blood and then you have to massage your finger. And I don't seem to ever bleed very easily. And it goes in my nails. Yeah, that's not gonna work, is it? That's not bleeding very much. I've got a funny feeling I'm gonna have to do another finger. Like I said, I'm trying, I was trying to do exercise because I know that I don't, well, it's not that I don't bleed very well because I do, if I have an operation or anything like that, you to massage your finger. You have not to do it too much because you can, can end up bruising. And that's going down. And it is filling up, you can see, but I think I'm gonna have to probably use another finger. I have done a few of these tests and I have never found it to be, you know, pouring with blood. I think part of the problem with me is I resist a little bit when I use the finger prick. And so that's not good. Yeah, this is kind of running out and I've not got very much in there at all. So I think I will wipe that one. Try this one. Use another of these. Try not to be such a wimp. Ouch. Yeah, that seemed like a better one. Definitely is. That definitely is a better one. Just what I don't want, why I am keep wiping it on that thing is I don't want it to go in my fingernail because that's what happened last time. It was a right blooming mess. I might have a bit of a bruised finger from squeezing it so much. Um, so there's some little plasters here. I don't think I actually need them, to be honest. I'm gonna use the other alcohol wipe. Ouch, oh, that stung. Okay. We'll stick these plasters on for a minute, why not? Let's put the top on this bed, shall we? So hopefully you can see that I've managed to get it. Oh, that's not really. Oh, it's a snap on. I didn't realize I was trying to screw it on. You can see hopefully that I've managed to get it above the line, the second yellow line. If you've got a lavender vial, then it's up to there. I think I need to shake that as well. I just need to look at the instructions. Put the date and time on the named labels and apply to each tube, like so. And then you can put it back in the protective box. Put it in here. Like so. You could fit three in there, you see. And then I've got to remember and enclose the lab request form. So I'm gonna put that like that. And put it in here. Just see if there's anything else I need to do. So this is, before you seal it, review the checklist below and make sure you've included everything. So checklist, correct lids on the sample collection tubes. Yes, because mine's, I've only got one. Um, date and time completed on collection tube label and all tubes placed inside protective packaging. Yes. Enclosed lab request form. Yes, do not include the box. And like I said, I think you can just stick it through an envelope, stick it through a post box and then go online and let them know that I've done this. Um, this is in Guildford. 
So I'm gonna take these off now because they're kind of annoying and I don't think I'm still bleeding. No, I'm not still bleeding. Not sure what this sterile wipe was for. Maybe to cleanse the area of the worktop or maybe to cleanse the bottles if you get it on them, I don't know. So I sent my results off the day that I took that blood, which was last week and it was so quick, really, really quick. Like within, I think it was two days I got a result. Um, maybe even one day. I think it was two days later that I got the results um, and they were available immediately online. Really good explanations of everything. And on mine, it said that I should go to the GP because um, it didn't, well, it didn't say which particular one I should go to the GP about, but basically all of my figures were high, except for I think my ratio was okay. So I'll put it on screen now so that you can see what the results were. And you may rem remember when I did my little quick keto update that I said I was particularly concerned. My concern was because my triglycerides had gone up. Or no, I was concerned because my triglycerides were high and also because my C-reactive protein test was high. So you can see that my total cholesterol is 6.68, which is not a good number. That's not a number that the GPs are looking for. But just to let you know what they do when you've got high cholesterol is it's not a case of you go on to statins. What they do is what's called a Q2 test. I think it's Q3 now. And that basically looks at all the risk factors in your life, um, the age you are, whether you're a smoker or not, whether you have family or family who've had heart heart problems, um, what your blood pressure is, etc, etc. And that comes out with a score. It used to be, um, well, no, it, it is 20%. If you get 20% or above on that, they will probably put you on statins. But they're talking about reducing it down to 10% and it's never happened, thankfully. Um, so it's not just a case of you've got high cholesterol, you get put on statins. So totally 6.68, which is of a concern and something that they will watch and keep an eye on. LDL is 4.07. Again, that's not good because LDL is the so-called bad cholesterol. Although if you watch any videos on keto and cholesterol, it's much more complex than that. I'm not going to attempt to explain that in this video. Um, HDL is 1.74, which is good. HDL is the good cholesterol. So that one they'd be happy with. Um, and it says total cholesterol HDL, but that's actually the ratio, which they've got down as 3.84. And that's actually okay. The triglycerides are 1.91 and that's above the 1.7. So that was the first thing that kind of flagged to me. Oh, that's not good. That's really, really bad. Um, and I was, I was confused and worried about that and thinking, why is it so high? Why is it so high? Because on keto, your, your triglycerides are supposed to come down. Um, one possibility was that I wasn't taking electrolytes, although no, not that I wasn't taking electrolytes. I wasn't taking a specific electrolyte supplement. I was taking um, magnesium, potassium, sometimes calcium, and I have a lot of salt on my food, so I didn't think that would be an issue. Um, but when I looked at my own spreadsheet that I've got, I, I keep a spreadsheet of results I've had over years, um, my triglycerides were actually higher last year. This same time last year, I had them tested and they were 2.28. So actually that's a reduction in triglycerides. So I wasn't quite so panicked then because I was just, I know that it's high, but it's it's lower than it was a year ago. So although I'm still in the danger range, it's danger range, this keto I think is having an effect on triglycerides and reducing it. So that's a good thing. Um, the thing that really concerned me though was this CA, CRPHS, which is a C-reactive protein test. Um, this one is a high sensitivity one. It's a really odd test in that it's not a predictor of specific disease, but it tells you that in your body there is inflammation and or infection. Um, and it could be anything from a common cold to joint inflammation to cancer. I mean, it, it could be a wide array of things, but I'm like vastly out of that range. I think it's not to what, not to five, is it? Uh, range is less than five and I'm 31.82. Um, and so that was a concern. I had no reason why it would be that. My joint pain wasn't particularly bad on that day. Just a little bit of joint pain shouldn't cause that much inflammation. You know, it shouldn't, shouldn't cause you to go that high. Um, I didn't have a cold when I took the blood. I, I wasn't, I was feeling absolutely fine. So there didn't seem to be any 
obvious reason for that and that was like I said the test that really freaked me out but my report said go that they recommended I go to the GP so that's what I did so I went to the GP this morning to discuss these results <laughs> my Watson's next to me so I'm just giving him little scratches you're just having a nice lion today sorry I got distracted there yeah so I discussed it at length with the GP this morning he was really good and he said with the cholesterol we did my score on the q2 like i said this formulation that tells you whether or not you go on statins and and i come out at 11 percent, which if the new rules had come in i would have gone on statins but as it's currently 20 percent, i don't need to go on statins and of course he recommended that i don't i no longer eat saturated fat so i said that that's what i was going to choose not to do you know i was going to go forward and try and be healthier which i absolutely am actually i'm going to try and hone my keto diet a little bit because this week has not been great I, I don't know whether i'm eating too many carbs because carbs there's more carbs than things i didn't even realize like i had that corned beef hash and i had a, the biggest share of pepper in mine and it's got quite a lot of carbs in it um so i'm going to try and hone my diet and not have as much butter and cream um and see if that makes any difference but my main concern is this crp which is c-reactive protein so he was also concerned about that so he said i need to have another test but it needs to be because i've only had it done a week ago i need to wait another week or so so i'm going to have it done in two weeks time i'm going to have another c-reactive protein test done and see what that tells me um if that is still raised they will probably want to investigate more but if it's come down then it just means my body was fighting some kind of infection or inflammation at the time. That's everything to tell you really about this test. Um, I could wait to put this video up until I get the results of um, my blood test, you know, for the repeat CRP. But I think that it's best that I put the video up now because it could go on and on and on. You know, if the result comes back the same, then they might need to do more blood tests or more investigations. Um, and if it comes back as not the same, then it will just mean that, like I said, it was a one-off. I maybe had... I was fighting off a cold or something like that. Um, and I can do another video just giving you an update, you know, a health update on the, the C-reactive protein results. And um, because I'm not having the test for another two weeks, then the results will be one week after that. And that's when I'm seeing this particular doctor. I already had an appointment with him for acupuncture for my neck. So we're going to discuss it then. So it would be three weeks before I get the results. So for now, like I said, I'm going to reduce my saturated fats. It gave me the kick up the bum I needed to go to the gym. So I went to the gym yesterday um, and just try to reduce them i'm not stopping i am still going to have cream in my coffee but i'm just going to reduce them a little bit like i said i'm a bit less panicked now because of the triglycerides but i would like to figure out what this um c-reactive protein is all about it can suggest that there's inflammation around the heart and so that's why i want to just be careful with these saturated fats because i don't want to overload them um because my dad had um when he had his first heart attack they say he survived it because he was on statins and I'm not anti-statins. I used to be anti-statins. I'm not so much now. So I, if he'd have given me statins today, I would have taken them. But I know that a lot of people get horrible side effects, horrible gastric effects, really tired, muscle aches, etc. Um, and I guess I would take them and just hope that I didn't get those because I've just got over feeling horrendous with my head, you know, for years. But I wouldn't have been anti taking them because, like I said, my dad was um, had a heart attack, but he was on a trial. He didn't know if he was on statins or not, uh, but they found out because he had a heart attack, they had to unblind the, the study he was on and find out if he was on the real thing or a placebo. And he was on statins. And they said that they, they think there's a good chance he survived that heart attack because he was on statins. But the other thing was... Um, he said he knows exactly what caused it. He said, and it was a kebab he'd eaten that evening um he said he could just there's no real explanation he's not really up particularly on you know nutrition or health or anything he just said i just felt I, I ate the kebab i didn't feel right and then he had the heart attack and it's almost like that final bit of of oil was just too much for his arteries to take you know um and so although there is the feeling that you don't need to worry about your saturated fats from a lot of people, medical and non, um, in the keto community, I'm going to pay attention to it until I find out what this C-reactive protein is all about and why it's high, um, just in case it is, you know, my heart. It won't do me any harm, will it, not having it? I might just be a bit hungrier. So that's everything to tell you so far today. 
so far today that didn't make sense that's everything to tell you today that's everything to tell you about this check um the ch oh the cost of the check was 79 pound well worth it the best 79 pound i have spent i had my eye on a couple of palettes but instead i bought this test because like i said it's always been important to me and at the end of the day if you're not here you can't you know use your makeup and whatnot so this to me was a really important test and it may well prove to be super important depending on what what the results are of this crp so um the other one i did was urine microscopy they do vitamin levels they do female hormone i had my female hormone panel done on another website but i think i might redo it on this website actually because that was also really interesting because somebody suggested to me when i talked about my memory loss that i may be perimenopausal um and but that was actually checked in in my female hormone panel and i'm not perimenopausal but that was six months ago so things could have changed um so i've got a 10 percent discount for you um this is not a sponsored video they didn't ask me to do this video i'm doing this off my own back because i've used diff lots of different companies for testing and this company every time i've had a query i've sent them an email i've got a response immediately um the test comes out really quickly. The test results come out really quickly. It's really simple instructions. You'll get everything you need in the pack. I just think it's a really good process. So um, I've got a 10% discount code for you, which I will put in the description. Let me know how you get on. If you do any testing, what tests would you do? Um, before I go, actually, one that's really interested is a thyroid. There's a particular thyroid one that GPs don't do, that if you are convinced that you have a thyroid problem, but the GP one comes back as negative, there's an extra thyroid test, I believe, on the, I'm sure there'll be one on the MediCheck site that you can do that kind of might put your, your mind at rest. Um, so that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, let me know what tests you do and your results, etc. And I will speak to you again soon.